I'm gonna run away, okay? Go! <laughs> Was that silly? In the first episode, we actually interviewed Mr. Kunzo in Japanese to figure out where he... Oh my god, I'm so nervous, okay. Oh my god, okay, I'm stuck, I'm really stuck. Okay, st one more time, sorry. Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm in the nursery of Mr. Kunzo Nishihara here in Japan. And that's my sister behind the phone. Thank you so much for filming this. In the last episode, we interviewed Mr. Kunzo about his plant philosophy, about why he collects all these plants, and he shares some of his favorite plants. In today's episode, I have access to show you guys around this big garden to see some really interesting, rare plants. Look at this beautiful peperomia, my gosh. All right guys, so there are actually a lot of different greenhouses here, but we've only got about an hour to film because I've got family waiting for me and I also don't want to impose too much of Mr. Kunzo's time. This is an interesting philodendron. I don't know, this looks like some kind of mutation. And that is something that we will see a lot here. A lot of the plants have really interesting variegations or mutations or it's just different varieties from the common ones that we normally see. Beautiful Ripthalis that is almost flowering here. Uh, yeah, I don't even know where to begin. Let me show you the space that I'm in now. I'm very, very overwhelmed. There's things hanging up above. And there's all these interesting philodendrons. There's some interesting ferns. This is a variegated fern, Drynera corsifolia. And just everywhere. Every square inch of the space has been used. This is a close-up view of a cycad. It is, uh, I believe, a Zamia parasitica, if my memory serves me correctly. That's a new leaf because it's still orange on leaves. It is an epiphytic cycad. A lot of aeroids. Aeroids are actually Mr. Kunzo's favorite family, but we will also see a lot of different genus and families of plants being represented here. This is a beautiful Hoya. Amazing leaves. Look at the new leaves that came out from this. Stunning. And we also see some more Hoyas here. And as you can see, a lot of these have prices on them. So they are actually up for sale. Uh, they only do sell during certain events. So check out their website to see when the next event is. He does export, but he does not have an online catalog as far as I know. That is a beautiful Hoya, either a Pachyclada or a Hoya Caria. I can't tell from where. It looks like a Pachyclada variegated. Here is mostly aeroids, and we actually did an episode before this, as I mentioned earlier. Feel free to check it out where Mr. Kunzo did walk with me throughout this compound to show me some of the stuff he's growing, and he pointed out some of his favorites. But yeah, there are, I don't know, this is locked up, so I'm not going to open this up, but it's extra humidity in here. I did notice a lot of the common, well, not common, like for example, the variegated Adansonia that used to be very popular. A lot of aeroids are in there, but there are also some really interesting rare specimens that we've never ever seen before. And the next greenhouse is mostly aeroids here, and a lot of things look familiar, but something's quite off. For example, this Brantianum here is labeled Brantianum S. Uh, Brantianum Ecuador, so it does have less silver on it. And Mr. Kunzo does collect many different variations of the same plant, so we see a lot of mutations, a lot of different types of variegation, and it's collected for many, 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 many years. All his years of experience in growing them, propagating them. And I do want to take this moment to thank Mr. Kunzo for giving me the time of the day and letting us film in his wonderful nursery. Look at this philodendron. A beautiful new leaf come out. This does not look like a normal philodendron. I don't know what variety this is. This one doesn't have a tag. There's a lot of peculiar, peculiar plants. I think this one it says it's the AFF Plaminii, which means it resembles the Plaminii, but not exactly. And I also want to thank my family for the patience because they came with me all this way. It is a fam family vacation and 
uh, I took the time out to film some plant contents. The amazing, cute little crotons. This is ones that these are ones that I've never seen before. That one's a little bit more common. This is the uh, chocolate queen. These are interesting as well. Again, I'm only pointing out random plants that caught my eye at the moment because I'm not really spending too much time here. This one, that's a name. I really thought that I got to know most of the aeroids, but this is really, really something else. Some Sansevierias here. I was pleasantly surprised when he told me that Sansevierias are something that really is close to his heart. I spent an afternoon with him and learned about his past, about what he does. God, this is beautiful. This looks like the philodendron black cherry, but I could be very wrong. It's very, very dark leaf, a variety of the pink princess that is very rare. Now it is very, very humid here. There's water everywhere, but also very well draining potting medium. As you can see here, the airflow is decent and I think he really has to work hard to keep the conditions right for a lot of these plants because winter time in Osaka can be a bit harsh for many of these tropical plants. This is a beautiful variegated cycad. We did see quite a few in the last episode. Very interesting anthuriums. Look at that. There's a pink dot in the center of the leaf and the flower is of course pink in color like this. So Mr. Kunzo is trained in Ikebana. He claimed to be the fourth generation and he actually has lived in this land for his whole life. How amazing is that? And he applies his skills in Ikebana towards landscaping and he does an annual exhibition at the Hilton Plaza Hotel during the Sakura season. And he is actually a landscaper at heart. He does a lot of landscaping projects, but he also gets a lot of his income from trading plants. His family is actually a wholesaler of plants and again, the Cabana people. So Mr. Kunzo is the first generation to actually travel the world actively hunting and looking for interesting plants to collect, to propagate and to trade. And as you can see from this collection that he's done so very, very successfully. He has a lot of passion in collecting all of these plants, not just within the same species, but also all the different mutations and varieties that are very interesting. This is for example, caught my eye. It says it's the Marmorata Papilo pla Plate or something. Let me see. I don't even know what this is. An Hello? Or an agave? Yeah, this is an agave, I think. Really wonderful desert plants here. A lot of them are actually incredibly beautiful and rare. Maybe one of these days. And tell me, please, Mr. Kunzo, if I could like spend longer time here, if I could show the world your collection in more detail, that would be amazing. This one actually caught my eye earlier. It's kind of flopped over. It's an aloe packy dactylus, says the tag. Look at the lines running across the leaf. This is a beautiful aloe. A lot of really peculiar ones too. There's so much to take in. This is even more rare and interesting than any botanical garden that I've been to. Now, a lot of the stocks that we see here are for collection, but they're also propagated for retail, for sale, for wholesale. And he can just pick them up and use them in his landscaping project at any time. So these are also stock used in landscaping. As in the panthees up there, there's a lot of beautiful bromeliads up above. And as you can see here, I think people are really into the pink color bromeliads. They're really, really quite stunning, especially as we are in springtime now. I think pink is a color that is very appropriate for this season. Now, there's a lot of interesting platyceriums here. If you look at that, it's just a whole row of them and they are a trending plant in Japan and in Taiwan. It is so serene today, feeling immensely grateful for this opportunity 
we covered that large lemon in the last episode but imagine working here he says he has 10 staffs working here let me tell you they have the best job ever it's so refreshing to be around so many interesting varieties there's this weird philodendron here that I've never seen before it's wonderfully variegated what is this you know it almost distorts my reality and everything I know about plants like who am I what am I even doing I don't know half these things and they are really wonderful it's very humbling to be here this anthurium flower look at that how magnificent is that it's like as big as my hand gorgeous platycerium right here I am on the second level now and Mr. Kunzo did mention that because properties are so expensive here he has to utilize different floors to save space interesting orchid leaves gorgeous and very peculiar ferns here this is Esplenium nidus spider it says a lot of hoyas also hanging down here and I was spending some time with Mr. Kunzo earlier. He seemed to know most of these plants by name, by their Latin names. That is very, very impressive. How do you even remember so many things? Interesting orchid as well. Man, he said that he started collecting plants when he was very, very young. He studied them and used them for styling. Oh man. He is one of a kind. I don't know anyone with this level of passion for collecting. Interesting. I think this is a Peperomia or maybe a Hoya. Looks like it's a Peperomia, you guys. Yeah, it is. It is not a Hoya. This looks like the Peperomia. Oh, I can't remember the name, but it's like a new, yeah. Peperomia Hope. My gosh, how does it look like this? This is blowing my mind. Our Peperomia Hope is usually dark green in color. So yeah, and apparently the employees have to clamor over this. Literally their feet have to be on these poles to access to the plants behind there. But you see there's a lot of really interesting aeroids back there that we, look at that one there. I'm like really, really lost for words. This is really, really interesting. Some interesting burgundy philodendron back there. And from what I see here, I don't think Mr. Kunzo has a budget. He can just buy anything he wants, probably because he's such a successful trader of plants. When you trade plants, you move them, you can always make room for even more. This is an interesting Tradescantia, you guys. Very, very, is this a variegated Zebrina? It could be. This is blowing my mind. Oh man, this is pretty insane. I think I might have overheard his conversation with my sister in that Mr. Kunzo lost his dad at a young age and he really had to make ants meet. So for him, the business aspect was very, very important. So from there, I think he started becoming very sensible with collecting, with growing, with propagating and buying and selling. And this is why he has this, this insane collection here. Some interesting Selaginella. Beautiful reds on these. A lot of interesting ferns. I literally see every genus being represented here. More Hoyas. And this one here, the sign says that it's a Philodendron Golden Dragon. I think this is the baby. Cute. And these are some really interesting, I think a ring of fire that is mutated. Now I'm guessing that a lot of these were grown from seed or maybe they mutated somewhere. And being a purveyor of rare plants, Mr. Kunzo works very hard to acquire these plants and then to propagate them really interesting this is probably some kind of just an 
This is actually very cute. I think this is a Cryptanthus, but I did not know that they can become Stoloniferous like this. Beautiful. I did not know that they make such beautiful hanging baskets. I think you learn so much. There's a lot of wonderful Hoyas here. You learn so much about plants when you are outside. And very interesting. Uh, I don't know if this is a banana, Heliconia, or Strelitzia, maybe Heliconia, that's my best guess. Interesting coloration, let me show you the younger leaves. And a lot of interesting Cryptanthus, if you look at that one, that was beautifully pink. My gosh. If you ask me when I started out my channel, if I can foresee myself doing this three years down the road, to have access to such a legendary <laughs> plant collectors, I would not have imagined it. And for that, I'm immensely grateful. And for you guys to watch my videos who are subscribed, thank you so much. Look at all these, most of these are Bilbergias, I think. And I do see some interesting Ripsalis here. These are very wonderfully pink. Oh man, that right there, this Cryptanthus. Very interesting. It's got this milky color, very soothing. And I've not seen anything like it before. And I want to remind you guys that I'm just going pretty much at random now. There's such a huge collection of plants that uh, I don't, I'm not going for a specific theme. I might have missed out a lot of things. <laughs> this is a very interesting jungle cacti. I'm guessing it might be a Ripsalis. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. Look at that. Oh man, this is really wonderful. This is a very peculiar shape. You look at that on the leaves. It kind of does a swirl on itself. So I'm actually on the second level now. And as you can see here, there's, there's the steps to come up, but there's a shelf here. And that is the top of the shelf from the first floor. How do people even access that? This is blowing my mind. Plant care here is not easy. Uh, I don't know how 10 people can manage all of this. It is truly a wonder. Very determined people, I think. Very skilled as well. Now I've seen this plant in different landscaping situations around Japan. So I'm guessing maybe they're not that uncommon. This looks like it's a, I don't know, like a ver variegated variety or maybe it just comes out white and fades into green. This is actually quite stunning. And I think this was cut off. So it might branch out from below after you cut it off. And maybe the top portion was propagated somewhere. Here are some bonsai. My gosh, that form is actually really beautiful, that one. And the leaves, look at that. I think this is variegated, but correct me if I'm wrong. So bonsai is uh, very popular here in Japan. It needs no introduction. And Mr. Kunzo also mentioned in the last episode that he makes these uh, cherry blossoms or sakura bloom against their will at a time of his choosing. So whenever a client wants to buy these plants, he can make them bloom at any time of the year by manipulating their conditions. Check out the last episode. He shared some really wonderful, interesting ways of that he's grown plants. And this is really interesting too. This, I think this is a Dikia. Dakota, it says. Dikia Dakota, vibrant colors, some caduceforms, and this one here. It says it's a Bufani. Hey, there's some names here. And this one. Look at that. It's interesting. It looks something emerging out of a codex. <laughs> yeah, and those are the same plants that we saw earlier. Interesting. Yeah, the top is cut off. I think it will encourage branching at some point. But there are some interesting agaves out here. This is another one. Look at that. This is a more prettier form. And this is beautiful as well. And this one is put out twins. That's so stunning. 
Caduceiform plants are very popular in Japan and in Taiwan. Look at that as well. We do have an episode on Caduceiform plants in Taiwan. Check that out. It's a few episodes back from this one. We have entered another greenhouse. It is super humid here, much more humid than the last one. Look at all these rows of plants up there. They literally have to use and utilize every square inch of the space. This is a Encephalardus. And there are a lot of different aeroids. I see some rubber tree, Ficus elastica. This is propagating away Philodendron lupinum. Sorry, Philodendron fibricata phylum. A lot of monsteras. Mr. Kunzo does collect a lot of monsteras, different forms, different variegations. Talensius. These are subhastatum. That's been cut so many times. You can see that they are almost like mother plants. If you cut off the main vine, it'll put off a lot of these offshoots. Look at that. Beautiful Talensia. And even the dead sibling here is quite beautiful. Now I did notice that he uses a lot of the dead plant material as part of the landscape as well, which is really clever because we should really celebrate all life cycles of living things. I mean, we do commemorate our dead. So this is interesting. So I can see why we should also celebrate some of the plants that are no longer with us. They do have some beauty. This is really, really tantalizing, this one plant. And that is one that hasn't really sprouted leaves yet. There is so much interesting visual aspects in this plant. My gosh, if you look up close, look at these fine lines on the leaves. I don't know if you see them, but this is quite beautiful. My gosh. And I think this is really beautiful as well. Now, here's the thing that's different with Indonesia. I think uh, in Japan or many temperate zones, a lot of the plant materials, they do die off completely in winter and they resemble dead plants. But in Indonesia, we don't have those changing seasons. So anything like this in Indonesia, we would throw away. We would not even appreciate its beauty or whatnot. But in Japan, there's a kind of, what do you call it? The re-emergence of life from this. But a, and also a different relationship with dead plant and dead materials. A lot of the Taiwanese also use some dried flowers, dried leaves as part of their landscape to complement some of the living and fresh foliage. This is a philodendron heteraceum, either the cream splash. Yeah, I think it's, it is the cream splash or the Rio. Um, but look at that. It's got a lot of pink on the leaves. It's got that extra layer of pink. So this might be an interesting variety that's different from the ones we're used to. Stunning. In this greenhouse, it's mostly aeroids. I see some anthuriums as well. It's high, high humidity where I am now. My gosh. Now I do see a lot of anthurium varroquianums all around. This one seems to be dark and narrow. They all have different forms. Actually, this is really blowing my mind too. This is beautiful. It looks like an alocasia, but the leaves are very thin and it's flowering and it's definitely a aeroid flower. Gorgeous. Beichiai. Look at that. Ooh. They're such classic plants. I don't know if they will ever go out of style. This looks like it's a biliotai crossed with adaba puansi. But I could be wrong. Amorphophallus, very prized in Japan of some sort. Quite beautiful, actually. Oh, a lot of Warokuyanums there. That one is so striking. Look at that. It's like a stripe of laser beam down the middle very dark leaves. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that in Japan, it is actually very easy to import in plants as long as you have the paperwork 
it is extremely easy one of the easiest in asia this is why a lot of collectors have been able to get their hands on that's spiritus sanctii by the way this is some kind of anthurium maybe clavigarum this is why a lot of collectors here in japan and traders like mr kunzo can bring in a lot of plants legally and with ease i think korea is another place that is very easy to bring in plants and very easy to export as well so these are ant plants i think very popular here in japan right now i don't think they're mentioned much in the western cultures a lot of them are endemic to indonesia this one is sold for a steep price fifty-five thousand. but the form my gosh look at that they seem to have some kind of symbiotic relationship with ants it's a large philodendron sharonii a lot of vhui's in the back and a lot of different variegated monstera monstera burlamar's flame and the popular yellow marilyn that mr kunzo named because he discovered this mutation here beautiful variegated begonia with the little pink dots down the middle some of them are flowering so cute and i think these are some kind of aeroid could be an epipremnum could be a peace lily now this is interesting look at how gorgeous the leaves are this is striking i'm gonna have a hard time finding out what this is this is a dicori sandra it says here but first time seeing this and the new leaves emerge quite beautifully and as you can tell from here see how cool the way they emerge very very interesting something tells me that this one needs a lot of humidity not easy and it's very reflective actually this is an interesting climbing aeroid and as you can see it's grown over its pole and it's now coming around it's quite stunning it's got like this nice velvety sheen on the leaves it's not velvet actually but it does look like it very interesting anthurium peltigarum very very interesting leaves this one it says is the philodendron tropical sunrise oh man this is so cute look at that new leaf my gosh and this one over here i think is the um, black cardinal variegated potentially stunning my gosh and look at those phalaenopsis bulbophyllum it's just been a day of wonderful discovery and we really are a bit strapped with time this is an interesting philodendron look at that there's a bit of maroon down the center and the leaves are almost black it says it's the philodendron red heart it looks like it must be a hybrid if the name is like that or some kind of mutation this is really interesting look at that one leaf goes sideways this is an interesting philodendron that i've never seen before it's too many interesting things here my gosh mr kunzo has some amazing amazing aeroid collection some interesting ferns as well over here and very frosty philodendron almost silver large clumps of Tillandsia stellifera now a lot of Tillandsias here seem to have longer coats like longer fur and maybe it's adapting itself to the winter or maybe it's just a species but I'm not sure like a lot of Parasiriums too so maybe uh, they are just more furry up here when it's cold in the winter this is really really beautiful this platyserum is really well cared for it's already on a mount ready to go yeah and one of the care tips that i learned recently about platyserium is that you should not get water on the fronds you should only water the media in the back and keep water away from the fronds this is how you can get perfect leaves yeah look at that very hairy Tillandsias and these as well 
I wonder if they're just bred for their hairiness, because sometimes you can selectively breed plants. But these are some of the fuzziest Talensias I've ever seen. Hello, Deschidia platyphylla. My gosh, so stunning. Ah, and there's more. I don't know what this one is. It's a Deschidia too, but let me figure out. Platyphylla as well, huh? Interesting, they're the same species. And look, that's a really cute variety of the variegated Hoya, Euphorbia, Baliola. How nice. And this one too. Look at that. It looks like a dead stump, but it's springing into life. I see some interesting codiciforms on the floor as well. And finally, we are up in the roof. Wonderful bonsai. A lot of them are actually winter hardy. So they are kept out here in full sun and in this glorious beauty that is Japan. I do have a video of my Japan trip if you want to see the sights and the places that I've experienced in my personal channel. I'm going to link that video up above. And uh, Japan is really, really quite wonderful. It's taught me so much. It's opened my eyes. Beautiful variegated cycad here. And thank you again, Mr. Kunzo, for having me, for hosting my family as well. And thank you guys for watching this video all the way to the very end. Do consider subscribing, commenting, sending likes. It will help me grow my channel because I worked very, very hard to produce these videos and I'm grateful to have this platform to share my adventures as well. This channel has opened up a lot of doors for me. Thank you for the people who have opened their doors to welcome me to look at your collections and I will continue traveling more to share these wonderful stories with you guys. Please stay well and sending a lot of positive energy out there to everyone. See you in the next one. Bye. Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the